Hey friends, welcome back to the channel and to the How to Survive Medical School series. In this video, we're talking about how to be more productive in medical school. And medical school, as you know, if you're a medic watching this, which you probably are, because I don't know why you wouldn't, if you, I don't know why you would if you're not a medic. But yeah, if you're a medic, then you'll know that there's like a ton of stuff to do in medical school. Like the workload is absolutely immense, regardless of which medical school you go to. And you also, in theory, want to have a social life and like, you know, do activities and societies and stuff on the side. And so kind of, being productive is very important. And I define productivity as being able to maximize the amount of time that I spend doing the stuff that I care about, minimize the time spent doing stuff I don't enjoy, and find ways of doing the stuff that I don't enjoy but I have to do kind of as, as efficiently as possible. So all of those things come into productivity and, and, and the way I see it, there's like a, a few different aspects of productivity that we need to hit. Like the first one is, kind of getting the motivation or the discipline to sit down and do, and do the thing that we have to do. Whether And for most people, I think that's usually motivation to study. Like we never need motivation to sit down and watch Netflix. We need motivation to sit down, open our books and do some work. And so that's one aspect that we can target. The second aspect is once we've sat down to do our work, how do we kind of stay focused and not distracted from the work as we're doing it? And that involves kind of self-control and you know, not having your phone with you and you can kind of turning Wi-Fi off so that you're not distracted by Facebook or, you know, all these various tactics for that. And then point number three is now that we're sitting down and we're focused on stuff, how can we ensure that the work that we're doing, we're doing it efficiently and productively? And so that involves using efficient study techniques like active recall and spaced repetition and categorizing and interleaving rather than doing things like taking notes from our book, just like copying notes out because that would be a total waste of time. And I've got a load of videos on my main channel about productivity. Um, one that I'd recommend you watch is like eight tips for time management because a lot of productivity is about managing our time effectively. So I'll put a link to that in the video description. And I'll also put a link to my Skillshare class that's focused on how to prepare for exams, but that also covers a lot of the productivity stuff. And that class will be out at the end of March, 2020. So I don't know when you're watching this, but it'll be out then. There'll be a link in the video description for that. But yeah, there's an absolute ton of stuff on my main YouTube channel about how to be productive. So I'm not gonna personally go into it in more detail here, but as usual with this series, we're gonna be hearing from lots of my friends who are gonna be sharing their productivity tips. Now, these are all friends of mine who are currently junior doctors. They were all medical students at Cambridge University. And I filmed these videos when we were in our final year of med school, having just taken our exams. So, you know, they were fresh at the time, even though it's been a few years now. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this kind of collection of advice on how to be more productive in med school. And I'll see you in a little bit. I think for me, I've always been the type of person who revises in very small chunks. I'm that annoying person in the library who will every five minutes want a break because I've done five minutes of really intense study, doing all this active recall and testing myself. And then five minutes later, I'm worn out. I want to go and take a break. I want to chat to my friends and then I'll go back in again. So I think the way that actually I get around it is that I will have breaks, I'll often go and see friends, I'll build in, you know, that evening I'm going to go to the cinema or I'm going to do this, and I'll work towards that goal, um, or work around a meal at lunchtime with someone, that kind of thing. Otherwise, I think I personally would burn out if I was constantly revising and working. I much prefer it if I have breaks and uh, can see friends and do fun things, so that when I come back to it, I'm refreshed and I'm ready to learn more. Generally, I, well, you've heard me talk about this on the videos, on other videos before. I'm a big fan of putting together time, what do I call this, timetables? Timetables, revision plans, whatever you call it. So scoping out the entire body of work that needs to be done, even though that's a very scary process in, a, in and of itself, breaking that down to small manageable chunks with a bit of you know room for, for spillage for spillage in between the days and then making sure that every single day you, so you break it down to small manageable chunks and every single day just hitting the target and so you've heard about me speak on this in, on previous videos of Ali um, I've also talked to you about what I mean by saving the day so making sure that I get whatever my goal is done even though I'm starting as late as possible so sometimes when you know you, you've just for some reason been very lazy you've wasted the whole day you find it's 5 p.m and you're like oh I'm not going to get my target done, but there's always still time left in the day. You can always save the day, and that's my kind of motto. So bear with me a bit, but my definition of productivity is going to be a bit different to other people's, I think. Um, whenever I'm thinking about spending my time well, because you know, life is short, we're all going to die, um, is to get the most out of life. And for me, yes, part of that is being ambitious and um, getting work done and progressing as a, as a medical student and as a medical professional. But a, a big part of that is just, you know, everyday happiness, time spent that I've enjoyed. 
Um, so for me, it's not that I don't watch TV a lot because I'm thinking, oh, you know, that's really bad, I should be studying more. I don't watch TV a lot because I think, oh, sometimes I think, oh, I, I could be studying more, there's that topic I really wanted to get to grips with. But sometimes I'm thinking, why am I doing this? I could be spending this time like having a drink at the pub with friends or having a coffee with someone I haven't caught up with in ages. Like, how is this like an efficient way to make the most of my time on that I'm alive? Um, so for me, productivity is just weighing up whether something is actually worthwhile. And rather than just settling into habits, which everyone does, um, trying to keep you know, that introspection going, keep thinking, what am I doing in my life that is actually bringing me more, like, kind of boredom and mon mundanity, mundaneness, whatever, um, than happiness and productivity. Uh, I think lots of people as a medical student kind of overplay the fact that, oh, medicine's so difficult, I don't have time to do anything because I have to, like, revise all the time. But honestly, um, during a normal kind of week as a medical student, I would only say spend like four out of five days on the ward. The last day might be kind of uh, like doing revision or like catching up on the coursework that we have to do. And then in the evenings, your time is free to do whatever you want. I think that we have a lot of like freedom to do what we want with our spare time, which is very lucky because um, Say if we were working, we would have to kind of be in the office from nine till five. But we can choose what to do with our spare time. And if you're not finding, like, going in that helpful, then you can just not. And you can use that spare time to develop yourself in other ways. For example, practice an instrument or get involved in a society. I think one thing that's useful is being honest with yourself about when you're working and when you're not. I don't think I'm, I'm the hardest working person ever, but there are some people who would claim to have put in a sort of a 12 hour shift and then you look and they're kind of, say, in a coffee shop, Instagramming their book for most of the time rather than working. I don't know really anyone springs to mind for that, but there are a lot of people who like to put in a long shift for having been in the library for 12 hours that day. Whereas I would happily be on the paddock playing croquet for a couple of hours, go to the gym, but the four hours I actually did, I was completely focused. So that worked for me. Um, it is obviously heterogeneous, everyone works differently. But for me, I know that I have a short attention span. So one thing was giving myself regular breaks and exercise. Another thing was never revising too much of the same thing in one day. So if I, was, if I were revising anatomy, I wouldn't just be like, right, I'm gonna learn the whole of the abdomen and the thorax today and I'm gonna read from start to finish. I'd do a bit of anatomy, a bit of biochemistry, a bit of physiology, and then maybe some sort of MCQs. So that to me was better. It was a way of keeping my attention span going, and uh, but not not just like completely procrastinating. Before we continue, I just want to tell you about the sponsor for this video, and that is Brilliant. Brilliant is a fantastic online learning community with online courses for maths, science, and computer science. So if you're a medical student, chances are your life is all consumed by medicine, as mine sort of was. Uh, and Brilliant is a great place to learn a little bit more about other topics. One thing that I'd particularly recommend is Brilliant's courses on computer science. So they've got a really good one about the fundamentals of computer science, the fundamentals of algorithms. And then once you've done those, there's a really fantastic one about learning Python from the ground up. And the reason I'd recommend the computer science ones for medics in particular is because so much of research these days and all the kind of tech stuff in medicine at the moment is focusing more on like machine learning, AI, big data, all of those sorts of topics. All of that sort of stuff is stuff that really is valuable and a skill that very few other people have. So if you're a medical student and you're interested in kind of making your CV and your general like portfolio of activities, like the skills that you have a little bit better, then please do go to brilliant.org forward slash appendix and that will give you a free trial. And then if you click on that link, the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off the annual premium subscription as well. So thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So one thing to say about productivity is that Productivity is a tool, it's not the end goal. You shouldn't be trying to just be productive. You should be being productive so that you can get something done so that maybe you have more time to do other things or maybe so you can do better in less time. And I think one element of this is um, deciding what to be productive about. Like you could be really, really productive and study um, a loads of like niche medical content but then if, you're not, if that content's not useful to you and you're not gonna use it in your exam or you're not gonna use it later in life, then 
even though you've been productive in the way you've studied it, you haven't been productive because it's not useful information. So a large part of productivity is thinking about what you should be learning and deciding what's most important for you at any particular time. So for example, when I was at medical school, like I decided I'm not gonna be coming like top of my medical school. I'm not gonna be getting great marks, partly because maybe I'm just not smart enough or I'm not willing to work as hard as I could to get to that level. So I set myself the target of just coming within the top 25% in everything that I do and being completely happy with that and not trying to go much further beyond that. Always aiming for about the top 25%. So when I was learning medical content, I would always ask myself, is this something that someone around the top 25 would know? And if it was something that was so niche that I don't think I'd ever use it in medicine and I might it might get me a few extra marks in the exam, but you know, it's only going beyond that 25% mark up to like the top 10% mark, then I'm not so interested in doing it. And I'd rather stop, not study that, study something else or just go and do something else. Um, so that was kind of my guiding principle, I think, for medical productivity. Breaking stuff down into very small chunks helps me to be productive. So I find that if I think about everything I have to do, I become very overwhelmed very quickly. And so kind of become completely paralyzed and do nothing. What I've tried to do, I'm still quite rubbish at it, but what I've tried to do is make small achievable targets. So say to myself, right, in the next two hours, you're going to go over neuromuscular disorders and just have that focus in my mind. Don't think about anything else. And that makes it far more achievable and I don't get overwhelmed by the panic of how much stuff there is to learn. So yeah, I think for me, just breaking stuff down into chunks and making it feel more manageable helps me to be more productive. Productivity hacks. Now this is a tough one, but um, I did a lecture for some of the fourth year medical students this year, uh, basically answering this, this question. How do you decide what to put into your day? There's a grid um, that, that I use. It's basically you sort things into whether they're urgent or not urgent and whether they're important or not important. And when you have those four categories, you basically put everything on your to-do list and you prioritize. It changed my life seeing that grid because uh, it meant that I realized that a lot of the things that I thought were really important, I didn't actually have to do. Uh, and that I could focus on what, what really mattered. And sometimes that also includes taking a break for yourself. Uh, and that can be the best thing that you can do for your productivity some, on some days. When I'm at my most productive is when I'm not delaying any task. Sometimes it means being a little bit less efficient doing it this way. Uh, and that, what I mean by that is um, sometimes I'll try and group tasks like I need to go to the shops, the shop is near the gym, uh, and I will kind of try and save both items to do at the same time. But sometimes uh, I found that actually doing it that way made me take a lot longer and rather than just getting on with it. And in terms of work, what that meant was if I remembered, oh, I need to look something up, I never looked that up, do it right away. You, you, you know, don't, don't just put it off till later. Uh, you'll forget and you won't do it again. Just do it right there and then. Other ways I used to find is that just uh, lock away things like YouTube whatever your vice is, uh, Facebook, whatever happens to be that you, you spend your time on. Um, I've got a PlayStation in my room. I take the plug out so that uh, if I do want to, I don't deny myself it, but if I do want to go on it, it takes that extra step that I have to plug it in and it makes me just think twice about it. All right, so that was various tips from me and various other friends on how to be more productive in med school. Um, like I said, link in the video description to a few of my videos on my main channel that are aimed at productivity, so you might find those helpful if you haven't seen them already. And I'll also put a link to my Skillshare class on how to study for exams, uh, which has lots of kind of how to be productive and stuff and how to study efficiently, all that is kind of baked into that. So yeah, thanks for watching, all the best with everything in med school, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.